Peter Buswell with a Dr. VoIP video cheat sheet comparing Cisco and Shortel solutions. I almost sound like a broken record in this respect, but first thing I want to point out is it doesn't matter what voice over IP solution you have. It doesn't matter what you implement. If you don't have a solid network to support that deployment, you're going to end up with a negative experience. So Shortel, ATT, Mitel, Avaya, at the end of the day, first thing you've got to do is get that network assessed and the remediation in place to make sure that you can carry voice and if you're paying attention, video over your network. If you've got a multi-site solution, you're going to need to be dealing with WAN connectivity issues. You're going to need a router uh, and be aware that uh, the various routing protocols that will be running in that router and how they will affect your voice over IP deployment. Carriers and setting up uh, QoS and service level agreements with your carriers is a very integral part of a voice over IP solution. These things can't be ignored. Firewalls, if you're going to be running SIP around your network, uh, there's certainly an impact here, understanding your border controllers and where to place them and how they're going to impact your design is all part of what you've got to look at when you're deploying voice over IP. Inside your network, we're going to look at VLAN design, inner VLAN routing, and certainly you're going to need power over Ethernet switches, power over Ethernet switches. So um, just a quick word, you need a solid network if you're going to build a voice over IP deployment, regardless of what solution you choose. For purposes of this video clip, what I'd like to do here is just uh, drill down on a few key areas. Uh, let's take a look at the model and the range, some of the core components in a deployment, the database engine that these different solutions make use of, take a look at media gateways, study some deployment models, Take a look at system administration and the ongoing cost of supporting this deployment in year two, three, and four. Before we can start comparison, before we can start a comparison, we need to figure out what we're comparing it to. And uh, one of the challenges with Cisco is that uh, there are a variety of products that are marketed under the Cisco Unified Communications a brand name. And so, uh, you know, for example, you can start out with a small 24 port uh, solution, a 24 port phone solution uh, that uses the Cisco Unified Communications. It's sold as the S300 series. Great little product, but it's 24 users. You can move on to the UCS 500, ultimately to the call manager, Unified Call Manager Express, and finally into the a unified Communications Manager Business Edition and the full-blown Unified Communications Manager. Uh, for purposes of comparing with uh, Shortel, I think we're going to stay focused on the Cisco Unified Communications Manager Business Edition or larger. Shortel, on the other hand, basically has one product line. They, they do have a, a product they refer to as the Small Business Edition, but at the end of the day, that's more of a licensing uh, strategy than it is an architectural strategy. Shortel's got one solution. This is it. You're going to have a headquarters server to support your voicemail, automated attendance, and call accounting. You'll have some short gear switches. You'll have short gear phones. And you'll have various application options, like the conference and collaboration server, contact center, uh, presence, and IM. For purposes of uh, this comparison, however, we're just going to stay focused on the telephone system. So if we were to look at some of the key elements, we certainly start at the hardware level. Uh, Cisco tends to be a server-based uh, solution. They, both, both solutions have servers, but in the case of the Cisco, 
uh, you lose your call manager server, you're going to lose a uh, dial tone. So phones register with the server. In the case of the Shortel, phones register with switches. And you'll look at some of that hardware a little bit later. I would see the Shortel as basically a distributed call processing uh, solution where Cisco tends to be centralized around a, a call manager cluster. In the uh, operating system area, Shortel is clearly running on Windows 2008 as its uh, base architecture. And Cisco is using the Linux uh, operating system. Database configuration, we're looking at MySQL for the PBX, the contact center, and the voicemail um, configuration database in Shortel. In Cisco, it's currently on the Linux platform using the IBM Informix database. Redundancy, N plus one in the case of Shortel. Basically, Shortel says uh, make your system redundant by just adding another switch appliance. And should a switch fail, uh, devices can re-register with any available switch anywhere in the deployment. In the case of Cisco, basically, redundancy means duplicate, get two of everything, and that'll solve your problem. Scalability, Shortel, you know, economically, I think you're looking at a, a low of 25. Yes, can I have a system with one phone? Of course you can. Does it make any economic sense? No, it doesn't. 25 to 10,000 users. Cisco, 500 to 40,000 users. You could power a small city with a Cisco. There's no two ways about it. Call control. Both technologies uh, use MGCP and uh, support SIP. In the case of uh, Cisco, it's MGCP and Cisco proprietary protocol named Skinny. Uh, they also support SIP and H323. So uh, in short tell between your telephones and your switches, you're speaking MGCP. Your switches talk to each other in a short tell flavor of SIP. And uh, phones in the Cisco deployment communicate with the call manager using skinny protocol and call manager generally communicates with the uh, media gateways like your T1 uh, when you have a MGCP capability, an MGCP dialogue. If it's uh, across a WAN, you're going to be using H323. In the case of Shortel, as it comes to um, single image access to the administrative portal. It's just one interface. I'm going to show you that. We're going to log in and take a look. In the case of the uh, Cisco, you're actually going to have multiple portals. It is a web-based uh, uh, interface. Um, what you need to understand is in the case of the Shortel, you're looking at one portal for both your voicemail and your PBX. In the case of um, Cisco, it's a, a web portal to your system administration for the PBX, uh, but understand your voicemail is actually a separate system, so there's a separate interface for that. Ongoing support, typically you're going to work with a Shortel partner or get enterprise support directly from Shortel. In the case of Cisco, I think the same options exist, but Cisco expects you to have a smart net support agreement in place. If we were to take a look at uh, deploying and, and what the dependency on servers is, in the case of Shortel, um, you do have a headquarters server. And out of the branch office, you might, in fact, put a distributed voicemail server to keep auto-attendant and voicemail off your very expensive uh, WAN connection. 